Hi there. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is talk to you about reciprocal graphs. Graphs that have the form y equals k over x where k is a constant. In other words things like say y equals 1 over x that's where k is 1 or y equals say minus 2 over x k being minus 2 k could also be a fraction like two-thirds so we'll be talking about the graph of y equals 2 over 3x and so on but the most simplest one to start with is y equals 1 over x and to draw any graph what we need to do is to set up a table of values and here I've picked a range of values of x going from minus 4 to 4 so in the usual way I'll just start to substitute some of these values into our equation here. If, for instance, we take 1, we've got 1 divided by 1, which is 1, OK? 1 divided by 2 is going to be a half, and 1 divided by 3 is a third, and 1 divided by 4 is a quarter. So what is happening is that as we start to increase x, notice how the values of y start to decrease but they always remain positive. If I was to sketch these points on a graph, we can see that when x is 1, y is 1. So we're going to have a point, say, there. And then when x is 2, 2 across, half up, something like that. When x is 3, it's a third. When x is 4, it's a quarter. So hopefully you can see that as x gets larger, we say tends to positive infinity, what happens to the y values, in other words, 1 over x? It stays positive, but tends towards 0. So we can say tends towards 0, and let's put a little plus sign there to say that it's tending towards the positive side of 0, OK? If we carry on and just complete the table for, say, minus 1, back here we've got 1 divided by minus 1, which is minus 1. 1 divided by minus 2 is minus a half, and so on. You'll notice the symmetry with the other side, only we're just taking the negative values. And if we were to plot these points, when x is minus 1, y is minus 1, we're here, say... When x is minus 2, you get minus a half. x is minus 3, you get minus a third. When x is minus 4, you get minus a quarter. So can you see here that as the values of x get smaller, the y values get closer and closer to 0, but from the negative side. And we can summarise that by saying that as x tends to minus infinity, the values of y, that is 1 over x, tend to 0, but on the negative side, OK? Now you'll notice that I've left out 0 at the moment. What happens when we fill this value in, 1 divided by 0? We should really know what the answer is. So, what do you think it is? Let's just check it out on a calculator. If I use a calculator like this, set up a fraction button, we'll put 1 in, send the cursor down to the denominator there, so it's divided by 0, press equals, oh, get maths error. Let's try it a different way. Clear the screen and say do 1 divided by 0. Press equals, still a maths error. So what's going wrong? Well, if I build up another table, round 0, let's say we take values either side of 0, but between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. We've already got the values for minus 1 and 1. Let's just put them in. Remember, 1 divided by minus 1 then was minus 1, and 1 divided by 1 was 1. But what happens if we do 1 divided by a half? How many times can you fit half into 1? Well, it goes twice. 1 divided by a quarter. How many times can you fit a quarter into 1? Four times. 
Notice how, as we get closer to zero, what is happening to these values? They're getting bigger. If I had 1 divided by 1 hundredth, for instance, which is very close to zero, my answer would be 100. And if I start to plot these points, notice then that as we get closer to zero from the positive side, the values become bigger. So we get the graph approaching the y-axis here. And the same applies when we look at these negative numbers here. If I do 1 divided by minus a half, it's going to be a minus value, and it's going to be minus 2. 1 divided by minus quarter is minus 4. And so these values are going down like this, OK? Starting to approach the y-axis, but never crossing it. So when we try to do 1 divided by 0, the calculator can't give us an answer because it could be very huge number, very large negative number. So what we say is that it's undefined. And if we were to join up our points here, what we get then is the graph y equals 1 over x, looking something like this. And what it's got is asymptotes at the x-axis and the y-axis. Remember, an asymptote is a line that the curve approaches. So the x-axis then has equation y equals 0, and the y-axis has equations x equals 0. OK, well, that's the graph then of y equals 1 over x. And what I want to do now is just show you another graph. Let's suppose we were to look at the graph of y equals minus 1 over x. What's that going to look like? Well, what happens is it turns out to be very similar to the one that we just did here. I leave it up to you to check this out. Just draw yourself up a table, something like this, and plot the points, and you'll see, as I say, that you'll get a graph looking like this. And I hope you'll notice that this is related to this graph in as much as it's a reflection in the x-axis or a reflection in the y-axis. So what we've got then is that y equals minus 1 over x is a reflection of y equals 1 over x in the x-axis or the y-axis. Now I did say that I would look at other graphs where we've got say 2 over x or minus 2 over x and if I look at values where the number on the top here is a positive value, we've already seen that for y equals 1 over x, k being 1, we get this graph, OK, here. But what happens if we now look at y equals, say, 2 over x, or 3 over x? Well, here's y equals 3 over x, and can you see how it's kind of pulled the red graph out? And what happens if we look at y equals 4 over x, or y equals 5 over x? And here's y equals 5 over x. Again, it's being pulled out. And I leave you to experiment more with this. You'll notice that the bigger the value of k, the more this graph gets pulled out. But we still have the same properties. That is, the x-axis and the y-axis are still asymptotes. OK, so that's that graph. Let's just look now at values of k when they're negative. So we start off then with y equals minus 1 over x that we drew here. And what happens now if I say take y equals minus 2 over x, or in this case, y equals minus 3 over x? Again, okay, you can see the graphs being pulled out. And if we do minus 5 over x, you can see the curve gets pulled out even further. Still, the asymptotes are exactly the same, and essentially the shape of the graph is exactly the same as before. So, I hope that's given you some idea on how to go about sketching 
reciprocal graphs of the form k over x, where k can be a positive or negative value. Okay, so that just leaves me to say thank you for listening, and I hope you'll return back if you want further help with other topics in the future.